Andrew is one of the top wind engineers in the world. He has worked in the industry for more than 40 years. Andrew has trained the majority of the wind consultants around the globe. Clients look for Andrew to find simple solutions to complex problems. Wind engineering is still not a hugely established field. So if it wasn't for people like Andrew, educating, training, mentoring and leading, wind engineering could have died out. I'm Andrew Alsop. I've been doing wind engineering in Arab for over 40 years. My experience of the way wind behaved before Arab was in sailing dinghies. I enjoy wind engineering and I enjoy the people. At this level, it becomes a hobby as well as a job. I joined Arab in the 1970s at a time when wind engineering was still in its infancy. I get involved with environmental winds around buildings, telecommunication towers and other structures. During my time with Arab, I worked all around the world, including America, Australia, Hong Kong. We've been working on the buildings around the Euston Tower for the past 30 years, particularly the environmental winds. And which was the hardest challenge? It's always been a challenge to deal with the windiness caused by the tower itself. And the south corner of the building is very, very hard to control the windiness there. It's the only place where the chairman of Arab has come up to me and said, what's the problem there? What can we do about it? Andrew starts by looking at the project as a whole. Even though we are usually involved in wind engineering aspects, he actually thinks outside that. Because he knows so much over the course of 30 years, he can contribute to different aspects of the project, point out different issues, and work with the team to solve that. I was responsible for the wind engineering of the Gherkin building. So you were involved since its early stage design? We were involved with it right from the start. In a way, we have eliminated a number of the challenges on this in coming up with a shape which actually is very slippery in the wind. The wind kind of finds its way easily around the, the round shape of the Gherkin, which meant that we didn't have to do very much at ground level to achieve reasonable conditions. The Heron Tower was one of the first tall building projects that came forward in the City of London. So what is the biggest challenge for the Heron Tower? The biggest challenge, apart from the obvious ones about building movement, to deal with the environmental wind conditions down at street level. We knew that we would need to, to wind tunnel test this building. That's looking at the dynamics of the building, the comfort of people at the top of the building, but also with any tall building, they catch the wind, generate strong winds down at ground level. The only way to model accurately is wind tunnel testing. The Canton Telecommunication Tower, it's a very nice structure. It could have had all sorts of aerodynamic problems, which we avoided by leaving the surface porous. We came up with an arrangement which was safe. The thing I'm most proud of is developing a self-sustaining team of wind engineers in Arab. Having such a team of wind engineers actually is almost unique among our competitors. I've learned everything from Andrew. I've learned how to grow my technical expertise. I've learned how to integrate and position with clients. Andrew in his career hasn't really had a mentor. He's had to teach a lot of the wind engineering techniques, skills himself and learn through the work that he's done. This is the challenges really that motivate you and keep you going, getting you up in the morning. The technique that works for inspiring a new generation of engineers is give them challenges which other people don't have pat answers for. That helps to give them confidence that they don't have to just follow other people's rules. Mm -hmm.